Hey guys, it's early on a Sunday afternoon and I'm just doing a little update because I know some of you enjoy. Uh, and for those who don't, feel free to skip this. I mean, give it a like and all that, but just let it run in the background. You don't have to pay attention. But I know some of you enjoy a little bit of the, the uh, is it is it Schoidenfrage? I That's not the right word. Freud, uh, anyway, the guilty pleasure of when people who did you wrong have a rough day. And uh, the sagas of business clients who've gone awry. Um, we had the, the one that was really funny about the people who tried to save $11 and ended up going six months without a website uh, because they had no idea what a web host was and just hated us emotionally and uh, never never took the time to, to figure out that we were the ones keeping their business running. Um, and that's why they didn't like us because they didn't know what we did. They just knew we knew the things they didn't anyway. So I have this story and this just came up while I was in Argentina. So I wasn't talking about it. And it's just hilarious, right? So we had a company. So I have a, a good friend who uh, actually works for us as kind of a subcontractor. Uh, he, before he did that, he knew me from professional circles. Uh, he was in his very first IT job, very junior uh, at the time. Now he's very senior, really great guy. Uh, brought us in to help out with some stuff. He wanted to move on. And so he knew us from professional circles. He was moving up to a more senior role and was leaving this junior uh, position behind. So he brought our company in to um, take over his role and do a bunch of stuff uh, for this company and let them let them grow because they were growing and they needed more capabilities. This is, I don't know, almost 10 years ago. Probably not quite that much, quite some time. And uh, so we took over this company. It was a small company in Georgia and um, uh, really good relationship. Loved the people that were running the company. The, they were the founders. They've been around for a while. Growing company, doing really well. Well, we Grew with them, had a really good relationship. I mean, things were fantastic. Um, we then attended their retirement party. They got bought out by private equity. We did that transition, worked with the private equity. They loved us, went through growth stuff with them, went through some shrinkage stuff with them, but it was good. Got into COVID and they came to us and said, look, we're struggling a lot during COVID. They were in an industry that was heavily impacted, totally made, made sense. And they're like, we know that you're really good and we love you and have this great relationship, but we're downsizing and we're laying off most of the company. Can you work with us to hold out till we come back? And you know, the agreement was we would not go away, but we would reduce the cost to help bear the brunt of their business problems, right? Now, understandably, COVID no one saw coming. We're not angry about this. We're getting hit by COVID too. And this is our, you know, do they go to their clients and say, oh, can you not pay us or, you know, can you pay us double or whatever because t times are tough with COVID? Are their customers? No, that's not how it works, right? So we're bearing one piece of their problems. Uh, so we agreed, you know, the long-term relationship, we're in this for the long haul, we're an integral part of the company. So we took a huge cut under that ar arrangement that we, they wouldn't let us go and we would help them weather the storm so that they could keep capabilities um, and be uh, able to recover afterwards. Well, during that time, the private equity firm, unfortunately, was a Nepo baby, which is fine, but he had done this whole private equity thing with this vision of being a big manager of companies and industrialist and all this. And after a year of doing that, he discovered that he didn't like running companies. He liked playing golf or something. Uh, I don't remember what it was, but it was something like that. He had a sport he liked to do. Why was he running companies? He had all the money he could want. And so he hired someone who was like actually a stock boy at Home Depot or something crazy like that. Someone who had absolutely no business running a company, but gave this really cocky demeanor and I, he's probably a manager or something at Home Depot, but not someone capable of running a department, let alone a company. Um, and they brought him in and he immediately, uh, unbeknownst to us, just started bringing in his buddies and hiring contractors. I'm sure getting kickbacks because that's what you do when no one's watching the watcher, right? Oh, we'll just bring in a company, pay them twice what it should cost, and I'll, they'll give me half of it uh, for the favor, right? That's just commonly how these things happen. Something, one of the reasons you always have to watch the people who are hiring vendors. So uh, at some point we got called in to help out with some things and it turned out they were transitioning to all these different organizations. And now at the time they're like, wait, we didn't know what you did. And we're like, we do the things that all these companies you hired do. He hired multiple companies, all at more expensive than we were, plus brought in a person to do the CIO job, which we were doing at, 
easily double or triple what we were costing. So all in all, they probably spent five to 10 times as much as they were paying us to bring in all these resources. And we're like, we're already doing all of this. All of this is provided, you had this all. Well, then they had to cover it up. So they brought us in, did a transition and let us go. Not only did they let us go, violating our agreement before, which means they technically owed us, that was in bad faith, so they now owed us all the money that we had discounted them over the past years, um, because this is, a number, this is three years ago, now three and a half. Um, they had used the savings that we had done to replace us. Right. It's the absolute definition of in bad faith. Like there's two components to bad faith in this situation. There's the, uh, we did this thing and then we did a different thing than we promised to do. And then there's, we used the resources you gave to us in order to do it. So they didn't just, uh, uh harm us by not following through. They tricked us into providing the resources for them to not follow through. So it was really unethical. And, um, and then when they fired us, they, uh, delayed some of their payments by like a year and then some they never paid. So they have back pay that they never do. They, they still owe bills. Anyway, this has been going on. So we wrote it off. We're like, whatever. Uh, we knew they were crooks. Um, once we met that guy and there was nothing we were going to be able to do. And it wasn't a relationship that we were really looking forward to continuing, but money's money, right? It's our job. So while I was in Argentina, I got reached out to by the CIO. Now keep in mind, this is the CIO. This is the guy they pay big bucks to run the show that we were already doing for very little. We took care of them. Like we bent over backwards. They didn't really need that much either. And uh, so he reaches out three and a half years after they fire us. And they don't just fire us, right? He replaced us. So he personally is, is a buddy of the CEO that came in unethically to get money for doing something he wasn't doing. And then when they fired us, they had to hire someone to replace us because they hadn't hired anyone with the capabilities we had. So they had to hire someone just to replace us as, as our more core functions. So he reaches out and he's like, um, we're having a problem with our phones because phones were one of the things we did for them. We're not their phone provider. We're just their technical support for it. It was their phones. They owned them hundred percent, their phones. Uh, we just managed them and we didn't build them. The IT company before us did. We just took over management of them, but did for a really long time. And, uh, and they were a heavy phone company like that. They're an outbound sales company, essentially. And, uh, so this is really critical for them that this is down. Uh, and he's like, oh, our phones aren't working. I was wondering, uh, if you could, if you could take a look at it for us, we think it needs an update. Like it, we think it needs an update. Like, oh, there's some patch you're having a hard time getting. I know that if you're not technical, this can be like, what does that mean? Generally, when we do updates on phones, which we do maybe every day, uh, it's a couple minute process. Once in a while, there could be something challenging about it and it needs a little bit of extra work. I could see why there might be something they're scared of or whatever. It was completely reasonable. And I'm like, okay, yeah, we can take a look. And, and, and then he's like, well, how soon? He started kind of being pushy about it. Um, and we're being really nice. Like they asked us for support. We're like, and this is at night. I'm at dinner with my wife in Argentina. And uh, they messaged me directly. They don't go through the channels. They don't put in a ticket. They don't ask billing to set up an account. They do nothing appropriate. They just went to me directly and are like, can you do this? I'm like, yeah, we should be able to do that. And he's like, well, when can we do it? Can I reach out to the engineer right now? I'm like, no, but we can probably get to it tomorrow. Like clearly this isn't a major thing, right? You've waited three and a half years to contact us about anything and have not retained us or paid your bills. So how emergency can it really be? Well, then he started getting pushy and he's like, well, our phones are down. I'm like, their phones are down. And then he's like, um, uh, a couple things came up and then it was like, oh, we need, we need major updates. And we're like, oh, so with the phone systems, the way it works is when you get to a major update, not a patch, what it means is you actually have to rebuild the phone infrastructure, move everything over. It's like moving to a new phone company, um, internally, right? It's all, it's all your own stuff. So like, no problem. We do this all the time, but this isn't like, Hey, can you apply a patch? This isn't like 15 minutes. This is, can you build a brand new telephony infrastructure for the business and then move the old configuration into the new one and, and make sure everything's running. So completely reasonable thing to ask, but it's a large ask. This is a large engineering project where we build a new server infrastructure for the customer, which is something we do. No problem. I'm like, Oh, okay. Yeah. That's, that's a bigger thing. Yep. We'll have to build all new servers and stuff. Okay. You know, and then I said, and he said, and if you could train us on how to do this, and I'm like, train you on how to build servers. Like this is, 
one, like a really big thing. You have to be an expert in the field. Like you need years of knowledge to know how to build a server safely. Like anybody can just slap one together, but to make one for production takes years of knowledge. It would be like, hey, um, I need a new car. And could you teach our mechanics how to design and build a new car? And be like, what? Yeah, in years, is, the, is that what you want? So I'm like, well, okay. But you know, you pay by the hour, so who cares? Because uh, I'll spend, whether it's a week or a year, as long as you're paying by the hour, that's the whole purpose of being paid by the hour. I don't care if you want me to sweep or clean toilets at the rate I charge per hour. <laughs> the whole point is, as long as I can do it, I don't care, as long as it's safe. Um, so I'm like, um, yeah, we're gonna have to uh, send a note out to Matias, set you up with billing so that we're ready. He's like, billing? I'm like, yeah, you guys aren't in the system anymore. You fired us three and a half years ago. We definitely took you out of the system. We have, you know, new accounting stuff. So we'll have to set up a new account. No big deal. And he's like, this is, I, why would I be billed for this? And I'm like, B because you're asking us to do work for you as an outside firm that you can't do. By definition, if you have to outsource something, not because you're busy, but because you can't do it, not the CIO can't do a really basic task and the company that, whose only job is to do this can't do it, and you want us to train them, so that's not even just doing it, that's another level of we have to understand it to a point to teach someone else. Um, you, what, what now? You're getting paid, they're getting paid, and neither of you are doing the job you're paid to do. You're getting upset with me after not be, I don't work for you. I've not worked for you like ever, basically. Uh, you, you want me to do your job for free, not just a whole bunch of work that you can't do and you should have been doing for the last three and a half years, but you want me to cover up for it. So then he's like, oh, just send me a bill or something. And I'm like, okay, I'm talking to the owners and they're saying that you really need to pay your back bills before you can incur new ones. So no problem, you know, we'll set you up in the system, just you have to pay for those. And uh, he's like, no. Um, and then he's like, if you could just give me access to the system. I'm like, what do you mean give you access to the system? You've been the CIO for three and a half years. You should be in there at a minimum once a week. Sure, daily would be a lot. We don't expect that. And, you know, what if you're only in once a month? Okay, it's within the realm of reason. Some things could be automated. Uh, but you have access. You are the only person who has access. You and the company you hired to do this. You have a responsibility to be in there all the time and because it's telephony and because the laws have changed since the time they put this in they have a lot of legal requirements that they've had to have done over the last several years both on the tech side and on the phone side and uh, so they're in FCC violation we know because turns out they've never once attempted to manage their servers in three and a half years things that you're supposed to do like you know every day uh, literally like if you have servers you update them every day that's how it works. Ah, some places do once a week. That's the longest you can go within reason. Some places will go longer, really be, that's a red flag, right? A week you can argue for. A month you can't. Like there's no rational argument for it under normal circumstances. For a system like this, daily is the only acceptable thing because of the way it works. And so for three and a half years, they've never started the job they were paid to do. And so he started yelling at me and I'm like, how the heck would I have access? We turned this over three and a half years ago. We certainly don't maintain those records. That's not our stuff. Like you accept it. I have the emails still where they accepted the handover. They confirmed that they had access, knew what they were doing and all was out of our hands and completely up to them. We wanted to stay on. They didn't want us to. So he was pretty incensed. And the, the final thing that I said was, are you also this angry when your current provider bills you every month and doesn't do the job you're asking us to do? You're angry that we're asking to get paid to do something we've proven for most of a decade that we do really well and never had complaints about, like ever. I mean, yeah, there's always complaints, but there's like no serious complaints in all those years. You fired us, hired someone else for more money using the money we provided for you. And you are going to protect them and be angry at us for not doing the work for free? Are you serious? He didn't respond to that. That was the final. But what he did do, he just before that, he said, uh, you know, if you don't want to do this work, no harm, no foul, uh, you know, I won't bother you anymore. I'm like, yeah, good. <laughs> 
So he immediately then reached out to one of my employees to try to convince him to do it. That was his, I'm not going to bother you any further, was to try to trick someone else into the same thing. That employee was like, um, what the heck are you talking about? He didn't even get into the billing things or anything because he doesn't necessarily know. He's like, I have not seen your systems in so many years. I couldn't possibly get into them if I wanted to. And so it turns out, so this is weeks ago, right? I haven't been in Argentina for a couple of weeks. And this is like at the early side. So it's probably pushing a month at this point that their phones have been down. Now there's a phone company, basically. They're a phone sales and, and marketing and service company uh, for the restaurant industry. And um, so they've been unable to function completely down, apparently for pushing a month. Um, this was the CIO had to have a conversation with the CEO that he hadn't been doing his job and had no idea how to do it. And the CEO had to admit that he hadn't paid the bills and had stolen from us. So that exposed a whole bunch of just what kind of people they were, but they're really good friends. So I'm pretty sure they knew, but that's the position they're in. So then they reach out to this employee and he sends it to me and he's like, look at this stuff. I'm like, this is killing me. And, uh, and, and they asked him, um, we don't have authorization from the, from the, you know, ultimately there's always a phone provider, uh, from the, the actual carrier to port the number somewhere. So they've given up. They're now trying to pay someone to take this over. So they're trying to go to yet another third party to do the job because the CIO can't do it. Their MSP can't do it. And together they can't find someone who's willing to do it probably because their credit rating has gone to. So. So they're trying to port their number to someone like, just guessing, ring central dial pad, someone like that, who's gonna charge mm, 20 to 30 times, right? Two to 3,000% what they're currently paying because uh, they don't know what to do. So what's really funny is this is one of those basic things. Like I have thousands of customers that I work with all the time, porting a number normally takes a little bit of explanation. Ah, you gotta look for your phone bill look for this account number on it. Like this is really simple stuff, but I understand that it needs a little bit of like handholding. We do this every day. Like I have a team who handholds people through this stuff and it's like, just look here, show this. If people don't know your name, right? Show you own the company or you're the CEO or whatever. Pretty simple, straightforward stuff. Apparently they can't do that. They're unable to show that they're actually running the company, which of course could be an indicator that they're not. That's a reasonable assumption I could see you making. Um, and I don't know, right? That's within the realm of reason. Uh, and so they have no ability to get a phone provider. They can't get anyone to support them because their systems, they're apparently locked out of their own systems. Uh, they don't know any of their vendors or, and don't pay their bills. So they're losing their phone number. Probably, um, like the number of things going wrong with this is just absurd. And all they ever did ever had to do was not throw away hundreds of thousands of dollars and just keep paying their bills and everything would have been fine all these years. They're, they've lost more money in this one month outage than the cost to pay us the full price for all the years that we were there. We were not expensive. They've lost their spending probably close to one year of our rate every month in other people not doing the job. Just, it's so, it's so frustrating. But then today, this is what made me think of it again, because every time I'm talking about it, I'm somewhere and, and not in a place to jump on a camera and tell you the story. One of their managers reached out through the old ticket system that we've not used in three and a half years and put in a request to us, not to their IT teams, multiple plural teams that they have internally and asked us to fix their email for something because the, the email's not working. Um, so I had to send a note to yet another person and say, sorry, you guys haven't paid your bills. And I know that your IT teams have been begging me directly and my employees to bail them out on stuff, but you got to pay your bills if you want us to do those things. So I'm starting to reach out to their different management components and being like, why are people from your company begging us all over the place uh, to do work for you? That's not very appropriate. What's going on? So anyway, that's the story of a customer we don't really like uh, doing things. And, and they fired every person we liked at the company, right? We had all these people we worked with. They were so nice. They fired them all. Anybody who was honest, anyone who's doing a good job, they got rid of them. This was such an unbelievable just milking the uh, private equity investors. There's so much money in the private equity guy and so little money in the business model that um, I, I think they gave up on the business all, altogether. I think the whole thing is just a charade to, to get the private equity guy's money and he doesn't oversee anything, so he doesn't know. That's my guess. But it was his decision to go with these people. So, you know, 
it's it's not something we can help them with. Um, but yeah, so that was my saga. Just wanted to share that with you because um, on one side I'm frustrated and on the other side it's hilarious because it's not like I've lost anything in three and a half years. I'm way past over it and uh, there we are. So enjoy the story and uh, I'll still be making a video for today. This is just a little extra, little tidbit uh, to get you guys through the day. Have a good one.